Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Rory Bazio after her win at the 2014 the North Face Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. Rory, awesome run, yet again. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers to that. Coffee time. It is coffee time. It is 9 a.m. Yeah. here in Chamonix. And uh, hopefully you got a good night of sleep. Uh, finally, yeah. I drink, uh, I think my crew and I figured it out. I drank two liters of Coca-Cola during the race. So it's taken about 24 hours for all that caffeine to work its way out of my system. And I'm finally feeling... A little bit more back to normal, so yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Um, yet again, um, a very strong performance, a dominating performance in the end. Yeah. But the first half of the race, uh, just like last, well, actually a little different than last year, you ran sort of with Nuria and Natalie. Yeah, I was trying to, I kind of, I, I was trying to kind of find that comfortable medium of, you know, this race goes out very fast. Um, I mean, the men especially just like, psh, they are running the first mile faster than I can run one mile, let yeah. alone the first of a hundred. So, um, and I was feeling like decent enough that I thought, okay, I'll just kind of keep it going. But then I definitely had to back off um, the pace once we got to St. Gervais and between like St. Gervais and Notre Dame de la Gorge where it's kind of the flatter area. And I just knew like, okay, this is not my section, let them go. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'll be able to make up some time on the climbs because um, like Nuria especially is a very, she's a great runner and very well-rounded. I think she, there's not an area she does not excel at. Like she's great on the flats, she's great on downhill, she's great on climbing. And I have a really hard time on flat sections. I just get bogged down. So mm -hmm. I kind of just had to have let her and Natalie go and be like, okay, see ya. It's not worth it to me to try and keep up on those sections. Yeah. And then they, you do have a very long climb up to Col de Bonhomme. Yes. Which is where I kind of feel like the race finally gets started there. You know, like the first three or four hours, you're kind of just biding your time. And then um, when you finally like get into the mountains and start climbing up, I mean, you have the first climb up to Col de Vosa, but it's kind of just fire road and it doesn't really give you that feel mm -hmm. of like being in the Alps and UTMB as much as when you're climbing up to Col de Bonhomme and that's where I kind of feel like okay now this feels like this feels like that UTMB. is a real hill right yeah there. that is a real hill yeah <laughs> or mountain and, let's call and it and you finally get off of the fire road and you're kind of in a technical area <laughs> and that since it's been so wet here this summer and like the trails are kind of trashed and um you're kind of picking your way up and it's kind of like find your own adventure going up you know and um so yeah i kind of i finally kind of got into the race and into the flow starting there so when did you catch back up to nuria and natalie not until natalie i think natalie i um caught up to on the descent into les chapeaux it's that very technical just ruddy almost like a little cow path and they're really narrow, if I remember. They're very narrow. And this year, because um, it had pretty much rained from like hour two to hour six, I felt like it was a good four hours of solid raining mm -hmm. there for a while. So everything was just super slick and wet and it's dark. And um, I think Natalie was saying she doesn't really love those kind of downhills, which I don't blame her. They're not like, they're not fun downhills where you can just let it flow. I mean, you really have to concentrate and pay attention and it was really technical. So I caught up to her there and then I didn't catch back up to Nuria until the climb um, out of Cormier up to Bertrand. Okay. Yeah. And at that point, you probably didn't run with her very long. We actually climbed up together for a while. Did you? Yeah, for about like maybe 10, 15 minutes. It was nice. It was just the two of us, which was like there were like no men around. And um, there, were, there was like a guy in front of us and maybe some guys behind, but just she and I hiked together. A little for, girl's night out. Yeah, it was, it was actually really nice. Um, and uh, I think we we're both kind of in a lower point right there. It was just kind of like, you know, it's the middle of the night and I felt sleepy. I was like, I could go to sleep right now. And, and it's kind of um, hard because you come out of, out of the night yes. into the excitement of Cormier. Yes, and which is just like going into Cormier is great because I was really excited for that because you get to see your crew and, you know, you're in Italy and it's just so fun and it's great. And but then you go back into the darkness and the climb. I mean, I actually think that's from Cormier to the top of uh, Grand Col Ferré is probably one of the more harder stretches because it's a lot of climbing. Um, you don't get to see your crew. You're kind of it's more desolate, desolate, and um, you're very spread out. And it's in the middle of the night. So and it's not it's two huge climbs, but it's two climbs where you have a climb, a Descent. flat, and another. But yes. It, like, they're kind of in quick succession, yes. as opposed to the other big climbs where you yeah, climb, climb, big descent, big descent, yeah. and then yeah. another climb. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the kind of a tr that's a hard section. And the first one is rough. The, the first, first it's, it's so steep, it's yeah. misleading, and you can't. And because since it's dark out, you can't really see when you're getting to the summit. I mean, you can see what is nice. What's really cool is um, 
you can see Cormier mm -hmm. is all lit up. So that's nice. And I kept thinking, I'm like, okay, we seem like we're high enough above Cormier. We should be getting to the top, but it just like kind of kept going and going and going. So, um, somewhere, so you pass her, uh, mm -hmm. you break away from her mm -hmm. after that, going to Foray. Mm -hmm. Um, and you open up a lead pretty quickly, but you don't know that's happening, obviously. No, and you can't, and it's like, at those points, I mean, I always feel like, you know, there's so much time left mm -hmm. in that kind of, in that race that, um, yeah, you just kind of have to just keep going your own pace and, yeah, just hope that you don't fall apart kind of thing. So. Um, but you didn't. Yeah, I, I still had some low points for sure. It was, this year was, um more challenging for me because, and I think probably for a lot of people, because it was so muddy, mm -hmm. especially the second half, because the we were on the part of the course where all the CC runners, uh, the CCC runners had been that morning before. So a lot of the descents um, were super muddy and you just couldn't bomb down them like mm -hmm. I could last year. And for me personally, I'm not great at, on muddy sections and I, get kind of paranoid that I'm gonna slip and what will happen so I kind of just pick my way down and I become so much more tense it's not like that loose free-flowing type of running it's um I felt just very kind of just tense on those downhills and it definitely made my legs more sore for sure so totally there are definitely people that I talked to that ended up having big problems because they were so much more tense on yes. those descents yeah the mud I mean it was just it made it just which at the same time though I kind of like that added element of making it a little bit more treacherous and difficult and you're like well if we're going to do something extreme we might as well take it to the most extreme because so. <laughs> i don't know if a lot of people would know but uh a lot of the descents on the utmb course there are exceptions but they're not all that technical no, no. It's, there's a cup i mean there's quite a few where you can like really let it go and flow and it's pretty fun yeah yeah that's i usually love that one but this year it was just like a mud slip and slide so it made it a lot trickier and then the descent coming down actually for me i felt like the hardest part of the race was um between the getting to the top of col de monte just right over there um and then contouring along to flagere this year for me i think i was just my legs were just so sore and tired by that point and then the descent from flagere down to chalet floria is really steep really rocky and it's at like you know kilometer 150 or 155 and that part i was like it just felt like a thousand little knives stabbing into my quads so that was the harder part that was part. hard yeah and it's it seems like that's the most technical one of the most technical parts of the race and it's at the end so it's, it was hard but at that point you probably know like well, i'm so superstitious when it comes to racing sometimes i'm like i always think like anybody could catch up to you at any, any point, point. Okay. So, yeah. yeah um it definitely didn't last year seem like one of those like just perfect yeah. moments. Not moments like just in a relaxed sort of way. Like mm -hmm. everything just flowed and this year definitely I seemed had, like more of a fight. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I had to really uh, work to get to the finish this year. Um, I just think the elements made it a lot harder, but at the same time it makes it so much more rewarding when you get to the finish because you're like, I really put everything out there and um, you know, you feel like pretty exhausted and but then the sense of like relief and getting to the finish is so much more like overwhelming. So. so what was it like like the last 40 miles? Like last year you were catching guy after guy, mm -hmm. after, I mean slowly, but yeah. you were only moving up. Yeah. And this year you moved up and up and up and then, yeah. not even like you fell apart, but a couple people passed you back. Oh yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I like, I kind of think about like, okay, how much, how sore do I want to be tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> like, how much, how hobbled do I want to make myself? And I find that happy medium of like, yeah, a couple people passed me, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> gotcha, so it doesn't like change your mental state? Then. No, not at all. No. No. <laughs> No. Maybe if Nuria had passed you. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Although she's so sweet and nice, I don't know. She, yeah, she uh, said she very much enjoyed uh, yeah. being out there with yeah, you. Yeah, she's great. I was like, you have to come over and race in the U.S. I mean, you know, a lot of our races aren't quite as difficult as this, but yeah. There are some. For there sure. are some for sure, yeah. Um, you won two UTMBs back to back, but you're a woman who likes to explore. Mm-hmm. Never stop exploring. <laughs> In sleeping bags. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see yourself trying a new adventure next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, I I love UTMB. I do not think I will be back next year. Um, I just need something different for me. It's good to kind of have the element of surprise and you know a new challenge. Um, 
there's so many races that I would like to do. So yeah, I'll we'll get around to thinking of something. I originally thought, I thought, oh, Tour de Géant, the two, if 100 miles in the Alps is fun, what's better, 200 miles in the Alps? I don't know. I think that's a crazy idea now, the day after <laughs> the race. I'm like, I don't know if that's such a good idea, but the, we'll see. The concept appeals to the you? The concept, yeah, yeah. It's like communism, good in theory, but maybe not so great in practice. <laughs> We're just out the communism of all <laughs> Yeah, <trying>. exactly. <laughs> um, what other races, kind of? Anything back in the States uh, um, that I'm, fire? Uh, well, my next race will be uh, the new endurance challenge that the North Face is putting on in Park City. Nice. Which in October, like nice time to be in Park City. Perfect time. Yeah, and then after that, I don't know. I haven't really looked. But next year, anything? Could, know. could you see a focus race in the States? Hard Rock, if they would let me get in. <laughs> so you, you might put your name in that lottery? Yeah, for next year? I'll definitely put my name in just because I might as well start putting my name in. But um, there's some more races in Europe that I would like to come back to. So um, I like to be able to travel and. Um, yeah, I mean, there's actually, there's lots of races in the States. Like, I would love to be able to do the rut, but the timing just is not right for me. Um, Come on, you got like... I know, I got like 10 days. <laughs> I don't think so. And Come on, footy, yeah. we'll start working yeah. on it. <laughs> and listening to how uh, brutal they're making that race, I don't think I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. No, it's not going to happen. No, no. So, um, yeah, so we'll see, but... Awesome. Well, yeah. congratulations, Rory. Thanks, Brian. And, uh... Enjoy a, what looks to be an absolutely stunning day. I know it's nice. The kind of it's kind of playing peekaboo with Brabant right now, and yeah. Yet another wet night, and yeah, exactly. You never know what you're gonna get it's the next morning. It's in the morning. Alps, yeah. Surprise. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh. hi Phoenix. Hi Jax. I miss you. I love you. That <laughs> is. I'm not saying hi to the city of Phoenix, it's a little baby. <laughs> hi Phoenix. Hi Phoenix. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? Um, I'd like to thank all my friends who came out and partied with me at the discotheque after the race. Had an you, amazing dance party. So you really did? Yeah, we went out to Les Caves and uh, yeah, and I think that's why I actually don't feel as bad as I thought I was going to feel. Rory's secret to recovery. Is dancing. Dancing. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think the worst thing you can do is just sit on your butt after the race. You need to work that stuff out. Then that's a perfect bonus question for you. What was your favorite song to dance to the night after UTMB? Um, I really like uh, I Love It by Icona Pop. It was a big hit here about two years ago, but uh, I really love it. I love it. <laughs> there you go, guys. Unwind or uh, recover with a little I Love It. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs>